I'm about to introduce you to one of the best, if not the best, indie game of the year. And if you've heard about it already, then I guess this video is kind of pointless. Well, you guys can always humor me. You can act like you don't know what the heck I'm talking about and be like, wow, that game looks insane. And if you didn't get it from the title, the game is Nine Souls. What is up, you guys? Welcome to The Collective. My name is Furman, and in this video, we are going to be talking about Nine Souls. Now, I actually found out about this game from one of my boys. I've already talked about him a couple times. His name is Manny, and he just has some of the greatest recommendations when it comes to games. Like He's the type of guy that just loves trying new games and just trying all sorts of games. So whenever he tells me that a game is good, 10 out of 10, I'm buying that thing because literally it always is good. But before we get into that, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content just like this. Alright, let's get into it. Now, Nine Souls is a 2D action platformer and it is developed by Red Candle Games. Now, the game is set in an Asian fantasy style world, which Red Candle Games describes as kind of... Which Red Candle Games describes as a Tao Punk game. And basically that's just a combination of Taoism, which is uh, a Chinese religion from what I recall, and cyberpunk. So, you know, they kind of put these two together, you know, it's kind of sci-fi and it's also kind of like Western mythology. So like it, it is just a really, really cool combination and I for one absolutely love it. Now I've only been playing this for a couple of hours now. So, you know, I'm just kind of giving you my early impressions of it and what I think about it. But you know, obviously I have a lot to talk about because this game is just truly so good. Now let's talk about the premise and the plot of the game. The story follows Yi, a legendary hero from the past who is on a quest for revenge to overthrow titular nine souls the powerful tyrannical rulers of the deserted realm of new kunlun now as you guys can see from this gameplay this game is absolutely gorgeous it is unbelievable to look at and i mean i am just i am just a sucker for games that just look beautiful and this one definitely does not shy from it it is one of those indie games that you just look at it and you're like, how is this even being made by a small indie company? Like, this is absolutely insane. And, you know, the this game definitely takes advantage of the horsepower and the beautiful screen that the Steam Deck has. That's actually how I've been playing it. And, you know, I got the Steam Deck OLED, so, you know, you get deep inky blacks and beautiful crisp colors. I mean, this game is just screaming. It is just gorgeous. Now the plot. 500 years ago, the Tianhuo virus infected the Salarians, which are an anthropomorphic cat-like race. With no cure inside, their leaders, the Ten Souls, developed the Eternal Cauldron Project, in which Salarians could rest in a virtual reality to delay the virus while they search for a cure. However, the energy to power the project required the brains of intelligent life forms. So the Salarians left their home planet of Pengli and set sail on a 500 year long journey on an island ship called New Kunlun to the pale blue planet Earth, where ape men or humans were discovered. Yi, the 10th soul, was betrayed and put in a temporary state of hibernation shortly before New Kunlun's launch, but survived due to a special connection with the primordial roots, a plant that produces vast amounts of energy and which the Salarians harness for their technology. Now, Yi awakens a few hundred years later in Peach Blossom Village, an area with, within New Kunlun where the Salarians had kidnapped humans to breed as livestock. He befriends a human named Xuan Xuan and subsequently saves him during the brain offering ceremony, awakening the nine souls in the process. To regain control of the Eternal Cauldron Project and exact revenge, Yi seeks out the nine souls in various locations within New Kunlun to take their soul seats. Now that is basically the plot of the game. That is an introduction to this amazing game. And it is such a like such a thick and vibrant lore. And you would think like this game just looks so simple. It doesn't look 
super complex like that but they just go they just went out of their way to make this incredible game and on top of that if we even need to talk about it the combat and the gameplay is actually amazing too now towards the beginning of the game there are a lot of like walking scenes and stuff like that things that just make you look at the game look at all of its beauty which is really nice you know i do appreciate that um this is actually the first time though that i got a little impatient because you were getting a lot of lore and dialogue towards the beginning of the game and i was just like man this game looks so amazing and it plays so smoothly i just want to play it can we just get done with this dialogue so you know that that was just a little bit a little bit of a gripe but you know it's not really that serious so after all that dialogue that you get you finally get to start playing the game and i think they start you off by pretty much hunting a boar and that's where you're able to like test out all the parkour and you know like the platforming and all that and you're truly able to see how fluid and how amazing the animations are in this game i mean the game just plays gorgeous and you know we live in a day and age where games they don't really focus on being smooth and fluid like that anymore they don't focus on having a ton of uh, frames and animations to make a character look almost lifelike even if it's like pixel based we were obviously spoiled because you know we got games like Mega Man X4 Castlevania Symphony of the Night where these characters are made with so much detail I mean just the way that they move is just amazing and I kind of wish that more games would do that more often now because of the fact that it just adds to the game it makes the game feel like you actually give a crap about the game you're making and it makes it more fun and more immersive you know not even that i even have to mention this but come on metal gear solid 5 peace walker that has to be the coldest and the most smoothest walking animation ever but let's get back to the the game at hand so the combat is pretty rudimentary it is not trying to break the mold or anything like that or at least from what i've played i don't know what the end game holds or what the end game entails but for the most part it's pretty simple you know you have this sword i think i'm not even 100 percent sure if it's a sword it might be like a stick or something but you have a weapon and you use that to attack your enemies you basically attack them and they also have a parry button so what you want to do is you want to attack the bad guys you want to attack the monsters the villains whatever you want to call them and when they attack you you want to parry them now not all the moves are parryable so you have to be very careful but man boy is it satisfying when you get that parry you're like bam oh and on top of that to add to the animations like look at this look at how insane this is the parry button if you keep pressing it she'll just like parry and she'll just keep doing it and it, i don't know why but this looks so sick and i absolutely love it but yeah let's say you did your attacks you're fighting you did your parry your parry essentially adds like a charge of energy i think it's key or something like that and this key allows you to do like a dash move where you place a talisman on their forehead and you actually have to hold the button so you can't just place it you have to hold the button and within like two or three seconds it'll explode and it'll basically pop their heads off now, like i said very simplistic not super complicated and you know sometimes that is okay that makes for a better game now i will say this guys i should have probably said this in the beginning of the game but the game is definitely not for children this game is extremely bloody like you guys remember when i was talking about the story where they're literally taking humans and for the most part they're kind of like humans that are uh smaller for you know i don't want to get demonetized or anything like that but you know what i mean like i don't want to get in trouble with youtube so you know they're humans that are small and yes they have sacrifices to keep the gods at bay basically and it is mega sketchy i mean literally it's like unheading them you know removing the head from the rest of the body that's kind of what's happening here it's crazy it is insanely sketchy but you know that's what you're there for you're there to rescue them and you're obviously re able to rescue your little buddy so really cool now i did fight one of the bosses i don't remember his name but uh he was pretty difficult i'm not gonna lie i had to do it a couple times i think i died like three or four times but it was pretty difficult and um i kind of just like the way the game plays i just love the way it is because it makes it so that you you have to learn the patterns and stuff like that and you know 
to a certain extent i do enjoy games like that so that's really cool yeah to wrap this video up i absolutely love this game i have been playing it like i'm, I'm like super addicted to it i'm literally trying to beat kingdom hearts rechain of memories right now and then i started playing that so now i'm like oh crap like i gotta oh boy here we go again but yeah, I am truly enjoying this game. And you know, just like I've been saying, it is absolutely gorgeous. It is an amazing game. It's beautiful and it's pretty fairly cheap too. It's only $30. Now you might think $30 is a lot for an indie game. And yeah, indie games do end up being a lot cheaper. But this definitely feels like a full fledged video game. This feels like a $60 game. So, you know, take that into consideration. Uh, keep that in mind. If you do decide to buy it, let me know in the comment section. And, you know, if you do have it, if you already own it, let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you think about it, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, how much you liked it, whether you beat it. Let me know. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. And as always, do not forget to like this video, share this video and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content just like this and we will see you guys on the next video peace now i've been really digging my steam deck but uh i heard that its competition got a new upgrade recently maybe i might have to pick that guy up yeah no we're not talking about the switch that's next year <laughs>